Mr. President, we are now reconvened from the election recess, and uh, I am back on the Senate floor for the 79th consecutive week of Senate session to draw the attention of this body to the growing threat of global climate change. Let me first congratulate my Republican colleagues on achieving a majority in the Senate in the coming Congress. With control of the House and a majority in the Senate, Republicans now have great power in Congress. As the well-known saying goes, however, with great power comes great responsibility. The hallmark of the Republican minority was obstruction, often pointless obstruction, obstruction for obstruction's sake. A rational and fact-based focus on the issues has not been, to put it mildly, their hallmark. That was their choice. And it is the privilege of the minority party in the Senate to behave that way. The minority party in the Senate can choose to simply make themselves antagonists with no policy responsibility. And I have to say, they did an amazing job of that. But now, my colleagues have a majority. And they have the power and the responsibility that comes with that, beginning in January. Mr. President, the touchstone of responsibility is to be responsible. And I'll concede this Senate actually could become a better place if the new majority, when it comes in, chooses to be responsible. And the uniquely partisan obstruction that characterized their role as the Senate minority passes away as they move into the majority. A key test of this, however, will be whether the Republicans here in the Senate choose to become responsible about climate change, about what carbon pollution is doing all around us to our atmosphere and to our oceans, about what happens when carbon concentrations in the atmosphere that have varied between 170 and 300 parts per million for as long as we have been a species on this planet suddenly surge to 400 and beyond, about what happens when scientific laws that have been understood since Abraham Lincoln was riding around Washington, D.C. in his top hat, begin to impose their inexorable effects upon this world. In the minority, they pretended it wasn't real. Some even said climate change was a hoax. Many said they were not scientists and so couldn't do anything about it. I'd note that they're not gynecologists either, but many have no hesitation about trying to regulate that area. No one would work on doing anything serious about carbon dioxide emissions. It was not always like this. Republican Senator John Warner was the lead sponsor of the Warner-Lieberman climate bill. Republican Senator John McCain ran for president on a solid climate change platform. Republican Senator Susan Collins co-authored an important cap and dividend climate bill with Senator Cantwell. Republican Senator Mark Kirk voted for the Waxman-Markey cap-and-trade bill in the House of Representatives. Republican Senator Jeff Flake was an original co-sponsor of a carbon fee bill 
led by former Republican Congressman Bob Inglis, that would have placed a $15 per ton fee on carbon pollution in 2010, more than $20 per ton in 2015, and $100 per ton in 2040. Well, all of that ended. That and more ended shortly after the Citizens United decision when our elections were, for the first time, flooded with polluter money and flooded with dark money, which is probably polluter money. But because it's dark and anonymous, you don't really know. So, say you're not a scientist. Isn't the responsible thing to sound out scientific opinion? Scientific opinion about climate change is now firmly settled. Climate change is caused by the massive carbon pollution we have unleashed. Every major scientific society in our country knows this and has said so. Here's a list if you want to check in with them yourself. This is a list from a letter dated October 21st, 2009, more than five years ago. We've been fiddling around on this since the science was so clear. I ask unanimous consent that this letter be made an addendum to my remarks uh, in the congressional record. Without objection. I could start with the uh, body that is chartered 150 years ago, actually, to provide us independent, objective scientific advice the National Academy of Sciences. If that doesn't suit you, try the American Association for the Advancement of Science, or the American Physical Society, or the American Meteorological Society, or the American Geophysical Union, or the American Medical Association, or the American Chemical Society, or the Geological Society of America. If you're not a scientist, Check it out. Ask the responsible scientists. Ask the leading scientific societies. If you don't believe them, measurements. Measurements confirm what the scientists know. Sea level is rising, and the rise is accelerating. You measure that with a glorified yardstick. It's already up nearly 10 inches at the Newport Naval Station since the 1930s, when we in Rhode Island had the devastating hurricane of 1938. It's similar at Fort Pulaski in Georgia. And go visit Miami Beach, where they just spent hundreds of millions of dollars installing huge 14,000 gallon per minute pumps to keep the city dry as the rising tides flood in. The ocean is warming. You measure that with a thermometer. Narragansett Bay is nearly four degrees Fahrenheit warmer, mean winter water temperature, than 50 years ago. That is an eco ecosystem shift. And it has wreaked havoc with our winter flounder catch, for instance. Warmer waters aren't just in Rhode Island. They've brought the snook, a game fish from the Florida Keys, up into Georgia waters. The ocean is more acidic, and it's getting more acidic at the fastest rate measured, looking back millions of years in the geologic record. If you doubt that the ocean is acidifying, ask the oyster growers in the Pacific Northwest and Maine. Ask the scientists who study Alaska's salmon fishery about what's happening to the pteropod, a key food source for species of salmon. Here's my challenge to my Republican colleagues who say they're not scientists. Ask the scientists. Ask the scientists at your own home state universities. And ask the folks, by the way, 
employed by your outdoor industries, the people who see the changes happening around them. Ask your park rangers. Ask your forest rangers. If you're from North Carolina, ask the scientists at the University of North Carolina Institute of Marine Sciences. If you're from Colorado, ask the scientists at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder. If you're from Iowa, ask the scientists at the Center for Global and Regional Environmental Research at the University of Iowa. If you're from Arizona, ask the scientists at the University of Arizona, which hosts the Climate Assessment for the Southwest program. If you're from Florida, ask the scientists at the University of Florida's Climate Institute. If you're from Texas, ask the scientists at the Texas Center for Climate Studies at Texas A&M. The Aggies get climate change. Check it out. If you're from New Hampshire, ask biologist Eric Orff, who worked for the New Hampshire Fish and Game Department for 30 years, what's happening to your moose? And ask Mike Bartlett of the New Hampshire Audubon Society, what's happening to your purple finch, your, your state bird? If you're from Utah, ask the Park City Foundation. And while you're at it, employees at Alta Ski Area, Canyons Resort, Deer Crest, Deer Valley, or Park City Mountain Resort, what they foresee for that industry. If you're from Idaho, ask University of Idaho professor Jeffrey Hickey how rising temperatures let loose the bark beetle and decimated almost 1,000 square miles of your iconic mountain pine forests. If you like big business, if you think that only the private sector knows anything, then ask the big property casualty reinsurers like Munich Re or Swiss Re, who have billions of dollars at stake and have to get this right. If you're from Georgia, ask the folks from Coca-Cola. If you're from Arkansas, ask the folks from Walmart. If you're from North Carolina, ask the folks at $30 billion clothing maker VF Corporation. They all have a lot of money riding on getting this right, and they're making decisions based on business, not on ideology. So ask them. If you trust the military, ask Admiral Samuel Locklear, commander of US Pacific Command, who says climate risk is the most dangerous long-term challenge we face in the Pacific. And if you're looking for some pretty good high-level scientists, you might want to ask NASA and NOAA. Remember, NASA, they put a rover safely on the surface of Mars, and they're driving it around on Mars. You think they might know what they're talking about? And if you need to hear it from Republicans, ask former Republican Treasury secretaries like George Shultz and Hank Paulson. Ask former Republican EPA administrators like Bill Ruckelshaus, Christine Todd Whitman, William Riley, and Lee Thomas. Ask Jim Brainerd, the Republican mayor of Carmel, Indiana. Ask Bob Dixon, the Republican mayor of Greensburg, Kansas. Ask Betsy Price, the Republican mayor of Fort Worth, Texas. Ask Republican Mayor Sylvia Murphy and County Commissioner George Nugent of Monroe County, Florida. If you're not a scientist, just ask. Do your homework. Exercise this new great responsibility that will come with the great power you have won. 
but don't pretend that climate change isn't real. Even your own young voters know better than that. A majority of Republican voters under age 35 think a politician who denies climate change is ignorant, out of touch, or crazy. Those were the words checked off in the poll. To paraphrase Michael Corleone from that great movie, don't tell me it isn't real because it insults my intelligence and it makes me very angry. To our Republicans, I say I want to be your best friend in all of this. The kind of best friend who tells you when you're in no shape to drive and should hand over the keys until you're sober enough to drive safely, even if it makes you mad to hear it. The kind of friend who will tell you the truths you need to hear but don't want to hear. And let me say, friends don't let friends deny climate change. I know the big carbon polluters want this issue to be ignored. But responsibility is knowing when to tell even your friends no. Responsibility is doing what is factual and is based in real science and measurement. Responsibility is doing what is right for your state and for your country in the long run, not just what rewards your supporters, even those really, really big supporters in the short run. Maybe, as their friends, you might even want to have a little conversation with them because this is only going one way. As Pope Francis just said, God is not a magician with a magic wand. He put laws of the universe, laws of nature in place. And we don't get a pass on them just because it's politically convenient. How long does ExxonMobil think it can pursue unsustainable fossil fuel goals by fixing the politics? Laws of nature can't be bought or repealed. The Koch brothers are rich enough to buy virtually anything, but even they can't buy new laws of nature. BP went and quietly shut down its solar and wind programs, but carbon still does what carbon does. As your friends, they might need a little intervention from you. And just so you know, I'm not going anywhere. I've got homes and businesses being swept into the ocean in my state. I've got fishermen who tell me that it's getting weird out there in Rhode Island Sound, that the lobsters and fish aren't where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there that they're catching kinds of fish that their fathers and grandfathers never saw in their nets. It's getting weird out there. I'm not going anywhere. My state is small and coastal. And worse, bigger storms put us in serious danger. I'm not ever going to ignore that. I'm never going to walk away from this issue. I will never deny what Rhode Islanders see right in front of their faces. And what all our expert warnings tell us are only going to get worse. And if you are going to be responsible and not just powerful, you won't deny this issue and walk away either. I promise you this. One way or another, we are going to get this done.